Hey everyone, Rodney here at Cleves Tech, and today I'm gonna to show you how to get started using Focus on Google Colab. Focus, of course, is great and easy to use interface for stable diffusion. And for people who may not have a powerful enough computer, Google Colab will allow you to use it for free. I also do have many videos in using Focus covering everything from prompting to poses and in painting. So if you want, check those out. Now, I will mention that using the free tier of Google, Google Colab has limitations. There are no set exact limitations and it could stop working at any time. When that happens, it will reset for the next day and you'll be able to use it again. There is, of course, the option to pay for Colab, which will give you more resources to use. Okay, so let's set things up. Now, you will need a Google account to do this and you'll need to be signed in. So we have that all set. And once you're ready, once you're ready, we're gonna go to the GitHub page for Focus. And on here, we're gonna just start scrolling down and we're gonna get down to the collab section here and i do recommend reading the information here now i don't use focus on collab much myself so i can't really give a detailed experience on using it in collab from my understanding it's gotten much better recently i have not run into any issues myself except for the obvious disconnect when i run out of usage now since i don't have a ton of experience using it on collab if anybody else does and wants to give any tips, leave those in the comments, or if there's a better or easier way of doing what I do, definitely mention in the comments because there is several different ways of doing certain things that I've found. And I don't know if what I'm doing is the best, but this will get you up and running and it does work. So the first thing we wanna do after we've gone over everything is go into, click on the open in Colab link here. Now, once you do this, it will open it up in Colab but we don't want to just use it from here. You could, but if we make any changes, which I'm going to show you how to make some changes here, it won't save those and you'll have to keep putting those in. So the best way is to just click on copy to drive and we have it in drive. Now it may ask you to open it in a new window, something like that, that mine didn't this time, but mine did previously. So now we can close that original one up here because we're not going to be using that one. If you want to name it, you can name it. If I go into my drive here and refresh, you'll see it's now in my drive. So I can come in here and I can just click on that. So if we close that up there and boom, I just click on that and now we're up and running again. Now at this point, we could just go ahead, hit the run button and everything would run and we'd be running focus. But I'm gonna show you more information on what you can do to customize or change some of those things because you're probably gonna wanna do that at some point, maybe not the first time you run it. So the first time you run it, if you wanna check if everything works, you can go ahead, hit run and, and use it. First thing to understand is how this works. Now, when you hit that run button, these first four lines tell it to set up the environment and it clones the focus from GitHub into the folder on Colab. Now, every time you go to use this, it has to go through that process of cloning, bringing everything in, downloading any models or anything like that. It doesn't save all that. So just remember that any folders, any files, those things will be destroyed but when it's completely done, when you're done using it. So don't expect to come back and any files that you've generated that would be in the folders, they won't be there. The last line tells it to launch focus with the, the settings that it has here in the flags. If you wanted to change those, there are, if you wanna use just the built-in presets, all you need to do is from the GitHub page, you can use these. So for the anime, I'd use the anime one. I'd come in here and control V, I can paste it in there. And now if I were to launch it, it would launch it with the anime presets. But even there, what if you wanna use something different? That's what I'm gonna show you how to change this. So you can have it download exactly what you want ahead of time and not download things that you don't need it to. Okay, one mention thing I will mention that I won't, I'm not gonna be covering here, but if you wanted to do it, so you could set it up exactly like this and have it just start, is you could set up your own, on GitHub, set up your own fork of focus with your own presets and everything else and have it clone that. And then you wouldn't have to do some of the steps that I do, but I don't use it enough to go through that and I'm not gonna cover on how to do that, but that is an option just to let you know. I know that is something that can be done. Now, the first thing I do in here is I add a couple extra. If you up here, you have the code. If I click on that, it'll add multiple sections of code. I usually start off with about three. I'm gonna copy this or actually cut it out of there and then I'll paste it down in the bottom one. That way, 
I can have it do other things between here and then I can run that when I'm ready when it's done all that. Now, the other thing you can do as well is if you find yourself using the different presets and you want to have them set up, you could come in here, grab those, and I could add another section, put it in here, paste it. And now depending on which one I want to run when it comes time, I could run the standard one or I could run the anime one here. Before I go too far into some of the other things, let's say I'm going to cover doing individual things first. So a lot of the questions I see people asking is, how do you get a specific checkpoint onto Colab? The easiest way to do that is to have it download. You, you put the code in to download it and to save it into your folder in Colab when you run it. So on this one, I'm gonna have it on this line here is the way I prefer to do it. I've already got the code set up here from my other account because you can have multiple Google accounts, of course. So in here, I have just the comment to start off with. And then you, this is the format that you're going to want. The explanation mark, W-G-E-T, space, then dash, capital O, space. Then we're going to be putting where we want to save it. So if you go into here, well, we haven't run it yet, so it's not going to show it, but You'll see it's putting it in the content folder, then focus is where we're cloning it. So in here, we want it in the content folder, in focus, then in the models folder, then in checkpoints, and then the file name. So that's how you'd set up the saving of the file, where it's gonna save it in the name. Then you put a space, and then we're gonna have the actual address for where we're gonna download from. Now, each one is different. I'm gonna cover from Civit AI. You can do the same from Hugging Face as well. So where you get this from, from Civit AI, so let's go to the Juggernaut page. Now, if we're on here, you do not copy just the address from up top because that's not the address that you want. If we look here, you'll notice they're totally different. So the easiest way to do this that I find, if you first wanna get the file name to use, you can just click on here, click download, copy that, hit cancel, because we don't want to download it onto our computer. Then we can go into here, and that's where I would paste in the file name. I could just paste it in there, or you can just type it in, up to you. And then in here, we go on the download button, we can right click and copy link address. And we go in here, I would just go ahead and paste it. And that's it. Now, when we run that, it's gonna go ahead and download that. So I'll show you, let's get started on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and start cloning Focus to start off with first. Now remember, each time we do this and run this, if I come back next day, I'm gonna have to do this again, and it's gonna to have to go through this process again. Now this usually only takes maybe 15 to 30 seconds to do, in my experience. Okay. It's completed. So now Focus has been cloned and it's set up on Colab. If we go over to our folders here, you'll see there's a Focus folder because we're in the content folder already. And in the Focus folder, you have all the standard stuff for Focus in here. And I will show you, you can interact with these files. Okay, so now that we have it cloned, if we were to start it now, just clicking on one of these, it'll go ahead and download what we need for that and download the default models. But the default models are not necessarily what we want. So let's say we wanted to have other models available to us. Well, we've now set up this checkpoint. So I can go ahead, hit run on here. Now I could add that line to the initial line as well. That's entirely up to you. I prefer to have these on separates because I don't always use the same models. So on my other account that I have set up, I have different checkpoints set up depending on which one I want to use. And this will take a few minutes to do because these are very large files. Okay, so it's done downloading at this point. It took a few minutes. Now, I'm going to go ahead and launch this, but I'm going to do it to show something because even though we have downloaded our own models, it's still gonna go ahead and download whatever the standard preset model is set to because of that's just how it's set up. But I'm gonna show you how to, you can avoid that. But I'm gonna show you first 
what ends up happening so you understand it. Because the main primary preset still has the default preset model as the Juggernaut version 8, I believe, at the moment when I'm doing this. So that's still going to go and grab that because we haven't changed that preset. But at this point, it's going to go ahead and install all the requirements that are needed that aren't on there already. If you want to change, you can leave this if you want to. It's not going to hurt it to go through there, but it's going to take more time to go through downloading everything. Now, everything is started and running at the moment, it looks like. Now, once you have this up and running, there's going to be multiple links on here. The link you want to click on is whatever this link is here, the running on public URL. So when we click on that, and it's going to be the same one that's down here as well. So we can click on either one of those. If you have any errors or anything, you'll see those in here. You'll also notice this is everything that it did. It went through and it downloaded everything it needs. And some of these things it will have to do no matter what. Okay, so let's go ahead and I'll show you what this looks like when you have it up and running just to show that it does work. Okay, we have focus set up. We'll go into our advanced tab. And now in here, you'll see the model. So we still have the version eight because that was what's in the preset. We can click on here and change over now because we also downloaded the other one. And if we go back into our collab, into the folders, you'll notice in here under models, checkpoints, you have your checkpoints in here. Now, in theory, I guess you can, I don't know if you can upload. I've never tried uploading a checkpoint by putting it into the folder. You can actually do that with Laura's. I'll show you that after. That doesn't seem to be a problem, but checkpoints are pretty large files. So I don't think those easily will work in my experience by just dropping them into the folders. But you can edit the stuff in the folders and that's what I'm gonna show you after to change a couple things. So now that I've shown you how this works when you run it, I'm gonna show you how to stop it and then I'll go and show you some more things that you can edit and change to make it a little bit easier when using it. So to stop this while this is running, you'll notice this circle keeps on going because that means that code is still running. So we can just hit the stop button here and it'll go ahead and stop that. So that's done. I like to clean that up. I'll close those. Oh, I know that's already been done, so I don't need that in there anymore. And we can close that up at the moment because we don't need to see that. Okay, now for Laura's, how do you install those? Well, it's the same idea. I sometimes get errors where it won't allow it unauthorized. So I'll show you two ways of doing the Laura's. One way is the same way as the checkpoints. Um, so you could have it download the Laura's that you need by clicking on the button. That's one way that I do it because a lot of times I'm not using all the different Laura's, so there's no reason to download them as, you know, so I put them on different lines. So whichever ones I need, I can just click on the button and go ahead and install those for that session because between each session, you have to go through and download each thing. Now, the same idea, the same format, where you're gonna save it is gonna be slightly different because you're putting it in the Laura's folder. You go into the download, you right click on it and copy the link address. And then you come in here and you'd paste it in here. Um, you can do that from Hugging Face as well. Now I do run into sometimes it doesn't, it gives errors that it didn't out download it, but then it ends up downloading it. So I'm not entirely sure what the issue is with that, but worst case, if that doesn't work, the other option you have, so I'm gonna go into there and then I wanna go into my models folder and we're gonna find the Laura's folder here. And that's where we're gonna drag. We can go in and click on this and hit upload and select the file. The other option is to drag the, the Laura over. So I could take this, as you can see down at the bottom, it says drop files to upload in obsessive storage. So I find the Laura folder, I drop it in there. It warns me that those will be deleted when the runtime, when I stop using it, that's fine. I'm gonna hit okay. Now this depends on your upload speed. If you do not have a very fast upload speed, it could take a while because those files are, you know, decent size. They're not gigabytes in size as the checkpoints are, but they are, you know, decent size. And you can see down here, you'll see the thing rotating. Now, 
I do find sometimes when you drop something in here, you get the red circle. If that happens, I don't think it's uploading. I, that's what happens when I try to put the checkpoints. I think they're too large, um, so it just won't upload them. And if you don't have a fast upload, you wouldn't want to do it that way because it would take forever. So you're always better off with checkpoints doing it the way I showed here. The Lauras, if you have your own Laura, obviously you don't have a download link unless you post it online, then you could do it that way, but then you'd have to otherwise put them in here. Okay, so ours is now in there, even though it still says it's uploading, so we'd have to wait for that. But those are the two ways that you can do the Lauras, as I said here, or you can just drop them into the folder. Now, the other thing that I do as well, and this is entirely up to you on how you wanna do it, I, there's another reason I have it set up, not start focus when I do all this. And that is because I wanted to clone all these things before I start it. So if I wanted to add wild cards, I could put them in here if I have my own custom wild cards now or any styles. You wanna put those in there before you start focus because if you don't, if you put them in there afterwards, it won't see them and you'll have to restart focus. Now that doesn't apply with Laura's and things. Once you have the Laura's, or anything in those folders, you can have it refresh your models and that will show up in there. But for the other ones, they do have to be in there when you start focus, otherwise it's not gonna see those. So what I do is I have a preset, I have changed the default one. That way I don't have it download the default models. So I've gone in and edited my, I have a specific one um, default that I put in here and so it's telling it, for example, in this one, I want to use Juggernaut X, the new one, as my default model. And I don't have the downloads in here, so it won't download those when I run it. Um, it will download the this one here, this Laura, because I do want it to download that. But the other ones, I don't. Now, you, you could put your, your stuff in here as well. That's up to you how you do it. So at this point, all I do is I drop my preset in here. And that'll replace, if I go into here, double click on it, open it, I'll see that it's now replaced the original one. And now my default is gonna be the X one. So now I've already cloned it. I put in anything like my presets or anything like that I want in here. I put in any custom wild cards that I'd like to put in there, any custom styles. I've changed the preset to use the X model. So if I were to just launch focus the moment, this wouldn't work because, well, it would work, but it wouldn't find that X model. So that would be an issue. So I do need to download that first before I start focus. And also I would need to download any Lauras that I need as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, now I've downloaded the checkpoint. I've cloned it. I've put in my custom stuff that I want before launching it. Now, if I wanted to Let's say get this Laura as well. I could go ahead and do that. Or if you have any other Lauras, you could add them at this point to the folders by uploading them as well. And once that's done, now everything else, those steps are already complete. And then I go ahead and I'll launch the one that I wanna launch. As I said, you can change how you do all this stuff. It's entirely up to you. I'm just showing you this is how I do it. I have a separate folder for all the stuff I drop in here. It takes me about 30 seconds to put everything in and get everything up and running. And then I just go ahead and I'll launch focus at this point. I do want to stress is every time you start a new session, it is going to have to go through and get all those requirements that it needs. It does take, a, you know, it can take a few minutes depending on what it needs to download. Now, if you're ever curious what's going on, and how much your resources are being used, you can click up here and it will show you the resource usage in here. And when you start hitting those, maxing those out, you can start having issues. But I really, I've, I've, I've used Focus with plenty of the face swap, the image prompts, everything else all, and I've yet to have it have issues. Now in the past when I tried it, I did have issues. So I think they've done a lot to improve how it runs on Colab. And of course you do have the option to upgrading to Colab Pro if you wanna go that way as well. I know there are people that use it on Colab and there are other services that run it as well. I like it because it's a free service. I can use it on occasions when I need to. Okay, so it looks like it's up and running. I'll go ahead and uh, click on that. Now, the one thing to keep in mind when you're doing this is whenever you do this, you have to remember it's a new session. So if anything hasn't been 
already downloaded in the background, it is gonna have to download any of that stuff while it's doing it. It usually will tell you down here on the bar that it's actually downloading something. But the other option as well is you can always go into your collab here and see what's happening in the background because it will show you any of that sort of stuff. Anything that's going on will be in this window. And you'll see the resources as you can see here as it uses more resources. And of course, you never know when this is gonna stop working, when you're gonna use up your runtime. So do keep that in mind if you run into, into issues go into here, it'll tell you that it got disconnected because of your session, you've used too much. Come back the next day and it should be able, you should be able to use it again. I do have a couple Google accounts, so I can always switch between them, but I don't use in a massive amount, so I don't usually run into that too often. So now we have our images. Now, so I'll show you how this works. So let's say we were to um, do the in-painting. What'll happen is when we go to actually run it, you're gonna see downloading in Painter. So in the background, we can see that it's downloading all those things. Now that'll only happen once per session because once it's downloaded, same as before, they're in these folders. But when you close the session out, those will all be deleted. So the next time you use it, when you go to in, in Paint or anything else, it will have to do that again. But it usually only takes a few seconds for those. Now, the one other thing to remember when you're using it in Colab, you can just download the images as you generate them by clicking up here and then downloading them. That's the other option, of course, is to go into here. And you want to remember this because every time you're done with your session, these folders are going to get deleted. So you can't come back in here later and find your images. So we can go into our output folder just like you would on a local system and you'll find all your images in here. So you could go in here and download the individual files. That's where your outputs are put if you're ever looking for those. It's the same as the normal one, um, Focus, in that regard, but you can also just click on each image here and download them as well. And that should get you started using Focus on Google Colab. At this point, you can use Focus as you would normally, and I do have lots of other videos and different topics related to Focus, so check those out if you have not. Hopefully you found the video helpful and hit that like button. And of course, I always appreciate anyone buying me a cup of coffee or donating. Thanks for watching and have fun creating.